My name is Jeffrey Frankel, and in this series of YouTube videos, I will show you techniques and tips to reduce the time it takes to deal with questions in Paper 1 of the IB Chemistry exam at both standard level and higher level. There are a few things about this topic that you have to remember. You have to remember that UV light has a greater frequency than visible light, visible, which has a greater frequency than infrared. And that's uh, frequency. That's frequency. Wavelength goes in the opposite direction. So if you remember one set, you remember the other. IR greater than visible, which is greater than UV. Okay, that, that you have to remember. Okay, you also have to remember that the relationship between frequency and wavelength is that then you multiply them together, F times lambda equals C. And these are in the data booklet. So for um, paper two, you don't really have to remember them. For paper one, you kind of have to remember them. Frequency goes up, uh, wavelength must go down and C is the velocity of light and that's the constant. So frequency times wavelength multiplied together gives you velocity of light which is a constant and frequency goes in this direction and wavelength goes in the other. The other thing you have to remember in this topic is that energy increases with increasing frequency and that's E equals H F. H being the Planck's constant, E is the energy, and F is the frequency. So as the frequency goes up, frequency goes up, energy goes up. Okay, so that's the basic you have to remember about the electromagnetic spectrum. And so when we look at this, which statement of the electromagnetic spectrum is correct? Uh, well, you have to quickly look through it, and infrared light has a shorter wavelength than ultraviolet light. No, it doesn't. Uh, visible light has a shorter wavelength than ultraviolet light. No, it doesn't. Frequency of visible light is higher than the frequency of infrared light. That is true. Energy of infrared light is higher than the energy of visible light. No, it isn't. So, you have only one which is correct, which is of course this one. In other words, the frequency of visible light is higher than that of infrared. Uh, the energy of visible light is higher than that of infrared. And the ultraviolet frequency is higher than that in both of them. And energy is higher than that of both of them. So if you remember those few things, you would get this question right. And there are a lot of words in it, so it does take time to work your way through it. But it can still be done, I think, in about 30 seconds, approximately. One of the things you're expected to recognize is a line spectrum. This has all the characteristics of a line spectrum. In this particular one, it's in the visible region, and there is the ultraviolet region in that end. And this presumably is a wavelength going downwards, and therefore frequency is going up. And so as you, the frequency is going up, the lines are converging. And this is a line spectrum. So as soon as you see that, you know, whoa, you're looking for a line spectrum. It's certainly not a continuous spectrum. A continuous spectrum, would you would see the individual colors themselves merging. You'd see red merging with yellow, yellow merging with green, green merging with blue, etc. That would be a continuous spectrum. Uh, it's clearly not the electron orbits of a hydrogen atom, because although they would look like these lines, they wouldn't have these colors associated with them, or these what are obviously wavelengths. And it's not the spectrum of sunlight after passing through a prism, because the spectrum of sunlight is a continuous one. And you actually see, although you would see these colors, you would see them merging with each other in a continuous form. So, that is a line.
Pas de chance. Now this question does have a lot in it. There's a lot of words in it. And this is about the atomic emission spectrum, specifically the spectrum of the hydrogen atom, but it's generalized to all atoms. In the, in the textbooks, it tends to be generalized to all atoms, but it's specifically about the hydrogen atom as far as the IB is concerned. And again, what you have to remember is that the, the, the levels do converge as you go away from the nucleus. So if the nucleus is here, and this is n equals 1, n equals 2 is up here, and then you get n equals 3 here, and n equals 4 here, and n equals 5. So you get that converging of the levels as you go away from the nucleus. And the other important thing is that any transition involving n equals 1 involves a lot of energy. There is a lot of energy involved simply because it's close to the nucleus. If you think of it, you've got an electron there in that orbital, n equals 1, and you try and take it away, it's going to require much more energy than in, if, it, if it's in n equals 2, n equals 3, and n equals 4. And similarly, if it falls down to n equals 1, it's going to emit more energy than if it's going to fall down only to 2, or to 3, or to 4. The other thing you need to remember is that when electrons fall to n equals 2, they give off visible light. So, based on the previous question that we discussed, you can see that when they fall down to n equals 1, they're going to give off ultraviolet light. When they fall down to n equals 2, they give off visible light. And when they fall down to n equals 3, they give off infrared light. Those three groups of emissions do have names, whether you're expected to remember the, the, the names associated with them is another matter, but do remember if they fall down to n equals 1, that is ultraviolet, if they fall down to n equals 2, that's visible, if they fall down to n equals 3, that's infrared, and there's more energy involved when they fall down to n equals 1, then there is, and they fall down to n equals 2, and that's more energy than when they fall down to n equals 3. The others are not important in terms of what you need to know about them, except that you do need to know that there's less energy, and they converge, and that would be n equals 6, much smaller. They converge. Okay, so going back to the question, and they tell you a lot in the, in the, in the, in the start of the question, it's used to study the arrangement of electrons in atoms, that is true. An emission spectrum consists of a series of bright lines that converge at high frequencies, and such spectra provide evidence that electrons are moving from. Now, the, the, the emission spectrum, therefore they must be moving from a higher level to a lower level. So it can't be A, it can't be B. So it's either C or D. Higher to a lower level, with levels at the higher energy levels, closer together. Well, that's true. Higher to lower energy levels, but the lower energy levels being closer together? No. So the answer is immediately C. So again, if you have this diagram in front of, in your eyes, and you've looked at it enough times, and you've thought about these kind of questions, you could quickly find C. Now, because there are so many words in this question, and because there are a lot of ideas in it, some helpful and some wrong, of course. It could take you more, maybe more than 30 seconds. I believe that you certainly don't need one and a half minutes. It should be less than one minute. Okay, having done all of that that we've discussed in the previous questions, we know immediately they are not randomly spaced. Uh, we know they do not converge towards the low energy level. They converge towards the higher frequency level, which is the same as the high energy level, so it's D. And because the frequency and wavelength move in opposite directions, 
Therefore, we know that they don't converge towards the long wavelength. They will converge towards the short wavelength. So the answer is D, the set of lines which converge towards a high frequency value. Based on what we've discussed, if you get a question like this in your paper, take advantage of it because the most energy would be released by any transition that ends in n equals 1. So it is this. That is the energy level closer to the nucleus and therefore would result in the most energy. And it doesn't really matter what these numbers are. Just being closer to the nucleus would, would, would release the most energy. And again, this is another question where if you remember the important information, you will remember that anything to do with a transition to n equals 2 is in the visible region. So, for b is the answer. b is the answer. Remember that n equals 2 is the visible region, n equals 1 is the ultraviolet, n equals 3 is the infrared. That's if they, in the, you know, in the future, they just change the question. Uh, produce a line in the ultraviolet region. Ah, you say immediately n equals 1. Or produces a line in the infrared region. It's n equals 3. So within a given set of transitions, whether it goes from n equals 2 to n equals 1, up to n equals 5 to n equals 1, the, we know that it's going to be in the ultraviolet region, which is that is, and we know that these are the generally the highest energy transitions that take place, and clearly there's going to be more energy involved in from going from n equals 5 to n equals 1 than going from n equals 2 to n equals 1. More energy and a higher frequency. And therefore, in going from that to there, the frequency of electromagnetic radiation emission increases and the energy increases as well. And the others are simply not right. Wavelength electromagnetic emission, no, it doesn't. The wavelength falls. Frequency electromagnetic radiation absorption, no, it's not absorption, it's emission. So that this is another one which, if you're clear in your mind about what is happening in this topic, you could do this in maybe 15 or 20 seconds and save a lot of time for some of the more difficult questions later in the paper. This is one that puzzles a lot of students. They look at n equals infinity and they think, well, we've never been seen that in any textbook. And that's true. Uh, you see n equals 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, n equals 7, maybe, and that's about it. Uh, n equals infinity clearly means a long distance from the hydrogen atom's nucleus. And if it's a long distance from the hydrogen atom's nucleus, and the transition is going from n equals 1, which is the lower state of the electron in the hydrogen atom, then it's going from the lower state to a long way away from the hydrogen atom. And therefore, it is the first ionization energy, because that is the definition of the first ionization energy. It's the removal of the electron in the outermost shell, which in the case of the hydrogen atom is n equals 1, removal of the electron in the outermost shell of one mole of hydrogen atoms in the gaseous state. And these spectra are measured in the gaseous state. So, it, this is the first ionization energy. It's certainly not emission, because this is actually absorption of energy. And it's certainly not absorption of infrared light. It's actually absorption of ultraviolet light, not infrared. It's certainly not the formation of the H-negative ion. It's, in fact, the formation of the H-plus ion. A variation of this question that sometimes occurs is to ask you to draw 
the transition. And you would draw it by simply saying, here's the nucleus, this is n equals 1, this is n equals 2, and then you go to n equals 3, which is a bit closer, and n equals 4, a little bit closer still, and then up here, you'd put n equals infinity, and you draw a line, a direct line from n equals 1 to n equals infinity and put the arrow there, indicating it is the absorption of energy from n equals 1 to get to n equals infinity. And that would be the first ionization energy. If you found this YouTube video helpful, please say you like it and subscribe to my channel and look at my other YouTube videos. Thank you.